Hello and welcome to the Small Exchange. We have such a fun program for you here today. It's a dope way to trade cannabis. Oh my gosh, we're going to have a ball here talking about futures, indexes, pot stocks, cannabis indexes, futures on cannabis indexes, how to access them, how to invest in a cheap way, how to trade all of these stocks with an efficient use of capital and uh, how to get long or short intraday and day trade everything without having to worry about pattern day trading rules or, or anything else. Um, but first, I do want to introduce myself. I'm Frank Caberna from the Small Exchange here in Chicago. It's 8 a.m. It's actually a nice morning here today. It's been <laughs> near zero for the last couple of weeks. The sun is out and it's about uh, 35, 40 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, which is uh, basically summertime uh, almost here. So anyways, uh, here at the Small Exchange, we create futures products, which are essentially just ways to buy and sell an index. Like the most popular futures product out there is probably the S&P 500 future, which is is just, uh, you know, the 500 stocks of the S&P there. And the futures allow you to buy and sell that index or that basket of 500 stocks for a lot less capital than having to put up uh, you know, all those those fragments of shares of each of those stocks. And so futures were created, like I say, as a cost effective way to buy and sell things. Here in 2022, the small exchange is working to not only bring innovative products like cannabis, a bunch of crypto products that we have, uh, our interest rates, though that's an old asset class, have a really innovative spin on them. They trade in yield as opposed to uh, bond prices. Um, not only are we trying to bring in that innovation to the field, but also those futures, S&P 500 or otherwise, uh, you know, in interest rates, in foreign exchange, were created for large institutions and have large sizes. Uh, and so what the small exchange said was, hey, there's a lot of people in the last decade or so who are, are opening their own brokerage accounts, trading more than one or two times a year just to buy a couple of stocks or invest. People are trading options and, and CFDs and all these different derivative tools. Why don't we give them futures markets that are smaller, that are simpler, easier to digest, easier to add to their portfolio, um, and also standardize them so all the ticks and everything trade just like shares of stock and everything else. And so that's why we're here uh, in, in 2022, is to kind of revolutionize that derivatives field of futures for the everyday trader. And what we're going to talk about here today is specifically um, our cannabis futures, which we launched launched uh, last year about um, and have been you know, a really nice, clean product for people to not only trade pot stocks back and forth intraday or day to day, but also as a great investment uh, tool as well. So I'm super happy to be here with everybody from Tick Mill. It's a great relationship we have with our friends over at Tick Mill, supplying them with the small exchange products for all their customers to trade. And so with that, I'll get into a little background about this product, how you can access it. And then we'll also have some fun on the back end with a, a nice freebie that uh, jointly between the small exchange and Tickmill uh, has helped to sponsor for all of you out there, which will get you reduced fees and exclusive content for uh, life here. So make sure you hang around for that. But we'll try to get through some uh, pretty interesting notes here on the front end of the segment concerning getting in on growth potential here from the small exchange and tick mill, a really fun, interesting new way to trade and invest in this very new uh, volatile asset class uh, here, or I guess I should say sector of an asset class being cannabis. Um, before we get into that volatility and how you can access and everything else, I do want to read you a disclaimer here so that I don't get in trouble with my compliance or tick mills as well. Uh, small exchange is a designated contract market uh, registered with the CFTC here in the US. 
information in this should be considered general information, not in any case as a recommendation or advice concerning investment decisions. The viewer itself is responsible for the risks associated with an investment decision based on the information stated in this material. The information in this advertisement is current as of the date noted, is for informational purposes only, and does not contend to address the financial objectives, situation, or specific needs of the individual investor. Further, the information presented here is for illustrative purposes only and is not intended to serve as tax or investment advice since the availability and effectiveness of any strategy is dependent upon your individual facts and circumstances. Results will vary and so on and so forth. Other information about the small exchange, what ETFs are, what futures are, and everything else. Um, and it, you know, it is important to talk about risk concerning uh, not only pot stocks that we're talking about today, because they are volatile, but also futures. Um, just because futures, those traditional big products used to pose a really big big risk. Uh, and thankfully, the small exchange, smaller products, smaller notional sizes, uh, you get the same leverage as those traditional futures, which is to say, you know, I can buy $1,000 worth of market X and only put up 50 or or $100 to do so. And it's only, you know, 500 or $1,000 product with those traditional products, like I talk about S&Ps and uh, everything else. Those are like, I think the S and P 500 futures now are, are over two hundred thousand dollars, and that's just craziness. So risk is very important when talking about options, futures, CFDs, derivatives, everything. Uh, but it is nice to note right off the bat that the small exchange is trying to bring you smaller products. You get the same cost effectiveness, but smaller risks, smaller products. There you can scale up and down how you see fit. Now let's get into pot stocks, everybody. That's what you're here for. And some of the largest pot stocks have been cut in half, more than cut in half in the last year or so of trading. It's been a rough go for pot stocks. Let, let's, let's all uh, face it here. But this does present a really unique opportunity and one that I've definitely personally, in my own accounts, jumped on uh, as I, I do find my, though I don't like uh, labels necessarily, I do find myself in the more contrarian field. When something is really beat up, uh, when stocks are really beat up or an asset class like, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, silver was uh, really uh, down scraping the bottoms of historically low prices. That's when I like to pick things up. And I, I know it may seem like a little bit of a stretch because the cannabis equity sector, the, this new stock sector that's really sprouted up the last five to 10 years here um, is very different than, say, the energy sector of, you know, ExxonMobil and all of those uh, stocks. But I, I can't help but draw a comparison between the fact that energy stocks in, you know, 2017, 2018, uh, and until like the last two or three years, they were the worst performing sector. You know, a lot of those stocks um, performing uh, between, you know, the, the 2010s to uh, just the last couple of years, like I say, down, looked like charts like this, down, uh, some of them down 50%, 60%, and so on. This past year or so, energy has been one of the best performing sectors. And so, of course, there's a chance that a, an equity sector, you see this fall down 50% or 60%, or even some of these cases, you see CGC there in the green line, 80%, and they just kind of trickle on down to zero in that sector maybe just gets kind of phased out. I don't see it. And actually, as I commit those words to this recording, that doesn't happen very often. It happens almost uh, never to an entire equity sector here. It does happen sometimes to single stocks that they kind of dr uh, dribble down to those lows uh, until they either get bought out or go bankrupt. But as a full sector like cannabis is, um, it's at its lows here, but I think presents a really decent value, especially as a contrarian play going against the trend, picking up some stocks that have not performed well over the last couple of years, because not everything can perform like uh, Tesla and Microsoft and Apple and, and everything else. And what's also really nice about you know just the year prior to this most recent year of action is that pot stocks have shown you that they have the ability to more than double in price. And some of them, you see their till rate more than triple in price or quadruple at some points. And so this, from my perspective, uh, you know, I am much more, I, I of course have investments all over the place, but I am much more uh, an expert on 
price action and uh, you know day to day uh, day trading or also swing trading and, and everything else. And this is a real healthy sign of a market when it can show both sides. It's shown that it can move up hundreds of percentage points. It's shown that it can be cut in half there. That makes me feel better about committing, you know, uh, a mean reversion player, like I, I alluded to earlier, contrarian plays. And this is where the small cannabis index comes in. It combines not only those three stocks that I highlighted for today's example, but more than a dozen other stocks diversifies your exposure so that you don't get caught holding the one or two of these stocks that maybe does go down to zero, does go bankrupt, or does have you know a small buyout near its lows. You get diversified action. And we'll see here in a second that buying this index with futures does cost less than stocks or ETFs when you're talking about margin or buying power or whatever you want to call it here. And now that I've combined not only these stocks here, but also 2021 and 2022 or 2020s, sorry, data, the last two years of movement, you can see that this is a pretty healthy two-sided market. Now, of course, S420, the small cannabis index and all the stocks that uh, fall within it can continue down towards zero and just sit uh, at zero there. I haven't seen a stock go negative yet. And so we're thinking that this stock index also can't go negative. But as a high probability trader, as a mean reversion trader, I look at this chart and I see the fact that, yes, it's been as high as almost $20. Yes, it's been as low as where it sits now, 7 or $6. But it spent a lot of time in between there I at least can feel confident in a mean reversion play of it getting back to 10, 11, $12, somewhere in the middle. But also if I do want to buy pot stocks, get a handle on this uh, new innovative equity sector for the long haul, I'm getting some of the best prices that you've historically seen uh, in here. Nobody wants to buy those highs that you see in January 2021, especially if you see the fall after that in February and March of 2021, I know it doesn't seem like a super sexy, attractive play. Everybody online is talking about how, oh, these pot stocks, how are they going to make money off of this? And there's actually bigger competitors than they thought. There's not as much demand and everything else. When they're writing all those articles and, and, and markets like this are on their lows, that's usually one of the best times to get in. I think it's the, the old adage uh, that the, the best time to be fearful is when everyone's greedy and when the best time to be greedy is when everyone is fearful. Um, and so, like I say, does that mean that this, this market can continue lower? Of course, it can continue lower. But uh, I, I do like investing in something when it is uh, near the lows here, and everybody is uh, uh, writing uh, about the the death of that market, or it's a pig, or it's going to zero, or what have you. A little bit more about this S420 index. Here are all the names in the index. You've got ACB, ARNA, which actually I think is actually just going through a, a buyout here, and so that will be taken out of the index here and replaced with something else soon after the fact. CARA, CGC, CRBP, CRON, C-R-O-N, uh, G-R-W-G, HEXO, M-O, O-G-I, uh, P-M, S-M-G, and on down the line there, you see Tilray's in there and some of the other popular names, X-X-I-I. Um, and they all have relatively equal weightings as well. Um, you can see nothing topping out more than eight percentage points of that index. We feel this is, is really essential, especially for a volatile asset class like this that can see some of its underlying markets rise hundreds of percentage points or fall 80 percentage points, uh, diversifying exposure across these different names and giving them pretty equal uh, weighting means that I don't have to pick the right one here. Um, I, I, if, if the right one is Tilray or the right one is CGC or Cron or whatever, um, I have a good chunk of exposure in that. And as we've seen, you know, with the technology sector, energy sector, and so on, any, any sector there, um, rising tides tend to lift all boats, right? I mean, it'd be a rare occurrence that the index is unchanged, but half of the stocks are up 
you know, 20% and the other half are, are down 20% uh, here. So nice diversified, pretty equal exposure across all of them. And now a little bit about the futures that you trade on that index. If you're new to futures or this derivative uh, space, it's, it's about as simple as it gets in terms of uh, derivatives. Uh, there's call and put options out there, which uh, have you know Greeks and and you know Delta uh, Gamma all these different things going on in futures. It may sound uh, scary here, but it's it's relatively straightforward. Uh, if you think this index is going to move higher, you would buy the futures on the index. If you think that it's going to move lower, you would sell the futures on the index. And we tried to make those futures look and feel as standard as possible, just like a hundred shares of stock here. Um, you can see the minimum tick size is 0 0.01, and that equates to one U.S. dollar here. Um, the margin, I, I want to hang on for a second because you see that size right now. It's about a seven dollar market, um, which, like a, a hundred shares of stock, that's seven hundred dollars versus uh, 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 worth of exposure. Um, and you look down at that initial margin, which is going to be your cost to access it from the long or the short side, that's only $150. So I'm getting 700 bucks worth of those different pot stocks that I just showed you there for just $150, which is, is really, really nice. And just one buy order here gets me those 21 different strains of pot stock for that reduced cost. So really a win-win when you're talking about effectiveness of your capital, which isn't to say, I, I always bring this up, if you have $1,000 and you buy one of the S420 contracts versus buying $700 worth of pot stocks, it's it, you don't then say to yourself, oh, I've got an extra $550 on my hand. I'm just going to buy more and more of these S420s. No, that's, that's bad leverage. That's when you get into greater risk problems. But what's really nice at, uh, when it comes to buying any sector, and we've got you know technology sectors, we've got a bigger, broader stock market, we've got crude oil, all these different markets, accessing them with the futures here on an index that's diversified, great for diversification. But if I have a thousand bucks or whatever uh, account size, I now get $700 worth of these pot stocks for 150 bucks. That five hundred and fifty dollars there, the rest of my account can go to you know buying technology stocks or selling gold or do, doing whatever you want there in a different, further diversified asset class as well. It's always good to have more of your account uh, there sitting in cash. Of course, you want your account to be churning and doing different things, but the fact that I have to put up less money to uh, get that investment really leaves the door open for me doing other things in other asset classes. Now, how the heck do I get these things? Well, Tickmill provides all of the small exchange products on its CQG and MT4 platforms. You can get more info at tickmill.co.uk slash futures hyphen and hyphen options hyphen pricing. I'm sure you can find it if you just run a search engine query for Tickmill futures and options. But I've laid out here in front of you the 10 uh, futures products from the small exchange. You see, we've got small technology, small stocks, small US dollar, 10-year yields, crude oil, cannabis, cryptocurrency, two-year and 30-year yields, and precious metals. First of all, the all-in cost is extremely uh, low. Th this is really, really out of any uh, brokerage and exchange as low as it gets. Um, our fee on our side is, I, I believe, 15 cents here. And I know that Tick Mills uh, commission charges extremely competitive and low down there with any uh, brokerage firm out there. Also, then you go over to the column there where you look at the initial margins, and that's what's what, what's charged to you to access these different products. And I can run down a couple of them here. The top line, small technology, that's uh, a $60 product. So that's $6,000 worth of technology stocks, everything from Apple uh, to Tesla and, and, and everything else. Uh, and you only have to put up less than $500 to trade it. That's really nice when you're talking about either day trading or just investing um, You know, with the cannabis example here today or small technology or any of these markets. 
um, if you buy and hold and you see an appreciation of two to 5%, let's just for uh, equivalency sake, call it uh, 5% in a given month, um, that return on your capital is going to be enhanced almost tenfold across all of these different products because you're using less capital to do so. Like I say though earlier, that doesn't mean, oh, I only have to put up 10% to buy this thing. I'm going to buy 10 of them now when I was going to buy one. Uh, but just really nice to see efficient use of capital. And you can see you go down the line, uh, none of these products for the most part are getting more than $1,000 in initial margin. Some of them, even small US dollar, less than 200 bucks to access that futures market. There aren't any futures out there that have as small margins as this. You get down there to the small two-year, short-term yields moving around like crazy recently. You can access short-term interest rates uh, with that S2I product, 140 bucks to try something out here, uh, letting you know, one, it's not going to cost that much to uh, access. I don't want to make it seem like I've got you know uh, millions of bucks, but most people can part with $100, $200 to try out trading something. But two, uh, margin is a great barometer of risk in a product. And so knowing that I'm buying or selling a market that costs $100, $200, $300, in margin lets me feel a little bit more comfortable that that margin is telling me the lifetime of this futures, my PL, my account is likely only to fluctuate by that couple of hundred dollars. And so a uh, really nice place to get started in futures in general with the small exchange products. And of course, Tickmill presenting extremely competitive uh, all-in costs there when you look at that. And yeah, just want to highlight a couple more of these products quite quickly. Crude oil, metals there has gold, silver, and platinum in one market, US dollar market there, um, which is US dollar against uh, Euro, Chinese renminbi, British pound, um, Australian dollar, Canadian dollar, diversified US dollar there. And that one only costs you a couple hundred bucks to trade small technology. That's a bunch of technology stocks uh, in there, moves back and forth with the NASDAQ a lot. And then the 10-year yield, a lot of those interest rates, uh, not only here in the US, but abroad really starting to move as uh, markets are projecting uh, hikes from the different central banks across the globe. So definitely take a look at that. The smalls, our mission is to make futures, make all markets really more accessible to more people, lower costs, smaller products, and just more straightforward access. So many people having to uh, deal with it, the interest rate asset class um, with uh, you know German debt prices, the boom and, and everything else, uh, Italian debt prices, the BTP, uh, and and that and the yield here, it's in interest rates. It's exactly if interest rates are at one percent and you think they're going to two percent, you buy that product. So we also try to simplify things for you as well. The last thing I want to bring up here before I run out and let you all get on with uh, your, your days and nights and whatever you're doing um, is the lifetime membership here to the small exchange. And this is a $100 one-time payment. You get 50% off your exchange transaction fees for life. You get reduced market data fee costs for life, and you get exclusive data sent to your email on all the products and how they relate to other products as well. And that is actually free for you uh, here today because of the TickMill sponsorship, our relationship with TickMill. If you go to that URL at bottom, and maybe we can post it uh, somewhere or uh, 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 send it out in an email or something to you all and others, uh, if you go to community.thesmallexchange.com slash sponsor slash TickMill hyphen sponsored hyphen 2021. 0324 there. I'll leave it up for a little bit. Um, you can pick up, you can claim your sponsored uh, membership here to our exchange. It's, it's an interesting little thing. Futures exchanges and stock exchanges of the last hundred years or so have let members into their exchange, right? And those are usually institutions, big trading firms, banks, and otherwise. And we said, let's make a small membership here for our small traders out there. And they get the reduced fees that those big uh, exchange members would get. And they get the you know reduced data costs and they get uh, more information on the markets and everything else. Uh, but let's do it just for the everyday trader out there. And you can see some of the numbers that we spit out too. 
everybody's standard deviations, projections, and how they relate to realized volatilities, and so much fun stuff in here. We've got features every week on uh, how markets act and 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 what you can uh, how you can access different things like crude oil. We've been talking about recently, and uh, also the stock market and how risky it is to short it. And then you have pairs trades, spread trades, uh, correlations, and so much fun stuff here. Uh, and I'll let this sit for just another second. Community.thesmallexchange.com slash sponsor slash tickmill hyphen sponsored hyphen 2021-03-24. And I'm pretty sure you can go there, claim your, uh, your, your membership, and uh, be a part of the small exchange for life. Get those reduced fees and hopefully try out not only the cannabis futures, but everything else and get into a different bit of a, a trading space. But that's all I have for you here uh, today. I really appreciate everybody jumping on and uh, watching. And I appreciate everybody from Tickmill setting this up. You know, we're a small uh, startup futures exchange here on the west side of Chicago in the U.S., and uh, we've had just a, a real fun uh, first year or so of growth, and we're excited to include more and more people uh, as we continue to grow and add products and everything else. So thank you so much for joining us. And uh, if you have any questions or so on, I'm sure we can uh, get you in contact with me or someone support here at the Small Exchange. Uh, and that has been your introduction to the small cannabis futures and the small exchange, everybody. Thanks so much for joining here and uh, have a great day. Mm -hmm.